Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Photo Notes. My name is Tony Colangelo. And as always, I'm with my good friend, Wayne Capilli. Good morning. Good morning, you? Wayne. How are things? It's a Friday. It's sunny. It's spectacular. Oh, <laughs> I'm glad you're having a good day. <laughs> Uh, today, Wayne, as always, you know, I, we're, we're excited to, to present another photo notes, uh, but today is going to be a special one because we're talking about tilt shift lenses. And Wayne, I don't know about you, but uh, I know when I was starting out and I heard about tilt shift lenses, it was almost magical. There's this mysticism about this thing called the tilt shift lens. And we thought it would be a good idea to talk about it, to break through some of the mysticism and misconceptions mm -hmm. about the lens, to talk about what it can do, um, and to give some insights as to when it might be appropriate for you to actually consider picking up a tilt shift lens, yeah. uh, for whether it be for real estate or for design work, what have you. Yeah, a tilt shift lenses actually are very okay. easy. So. so before we jump in though, uh, I am pleased to share uh, on behalf of Wayne and our good friend, Frazier Almeida, uh, a terrific photographer out of Las Vegas, that Wayne, Frazier and I will be doing a workshop at the PMRE conference in Las Vegas this November. Uh, this was previously known as the PFRE conference, but our good friend, Brandon Cooper, has rebranded the conference to PMRE, Photography and Media for Real Estate, which I think is a, a, a great evolution and, and very necessary because it takes into account the reality uh, of the real estate photography world. We are not just photographers. We are actually digital content providers. So we are media. Correct. Strategic partners. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, so our workshop, it's going to be a two-day workshop in Las Vegas. Uh, we are going to be focusing on luxury real estate. So we'll be talking about how to shoot it, how composition differs between luxury and uh, more day-to-day -day, uh, real estate. We'll be talking about how to market to luxury uh, real estate agents. And we're going to give everybody time on the second day with their own gear uh, to go into this great house that Frazier is going to get for us because he's uh, he's been in Las Vegas for so long, has a lot of connections, and we'll, I'm sure we'll get us a, a great house to shoot and folks can bring their own gear and hopefully get some portfolio worthy material for themselves. Yeah. And one of the things that also is just being around other photographers doing the same thing is yeah. so invaluable. And Absolutely. even if, even although I'm teaching the workshop, I would take this workshop just for Tony and Frazier. So ah. I, you know, I think this is going to be a great workshop. That's the nicest thing somebody said to me in a long time. <laughs> so thank you, bud. Okay, so let's jump into uh, our talk today on tilt shift lenses. And Wayne, I, I want to ask you right off the top, what is a tilt shift lens and what makes it so special? Okay, so let's take the mysticism out of a tilt shift lens. Really, tilt shift lenses are lenses that have a very large image circle, allowing the lens to move while keeping the camera stationary. That's all a tilt shift lens does. So right. when we're not tipping the camera up or down, it keeps the verticals perfect. And right. it also... You need to get into the frame of mind that the lens is moving and the camera isn't moving. So that means that a lot of times when we compose our pictures and when we want something to the left or the right, we tend to literally point the camera left or right. When you have a large image circle, as you'll see, you can shift, you can shift it over to the left or right or up or down while keeping your same composition. It's something that you have to, you have to see. Well, speaking of seeing it, I know you have uh, a number of different examples that speak to um, how it's used, why it's used, and its value. So let's jump right in. Bud. So let's okay. start at the very beginning. This is a 24 millimeter lens, and this happens to be a tilt shift lens. I put it down on the ground and I pointed it straight at this building. And 
you know, there's a lot of foreground. There's a lot of, there's a lot of road. I don't want it. I just want to see more sky. So instead of tilting the camera up, what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to shift the lens up so I see more sky. Again, right. I didn't move the camera. Um, I didn't tilt it up. I simply looked, shifted the lens up, which kept the verticals more consistent. It's a little off, but you know, we can, we can fix that. But yeah, again, this is a 24 millimeter lens and um, there's image above that, that that I didn't have to um, point the camera up. So right. I want to show you the difference between shifting up and using a 24 millimeter lens. This is a 24 millimeter lens that I now, instead of pointing straight at the building to get more sky, I tilted the camera up to see more sky. And you can right. see that, you know, that the verticals on this are now kind of pointing upwards. So right. what we're going to do is we're going to, you know, just simply fix the, fix the verticals on this. And then we're yeah. going to crop. Something like right. that. Okay. Okay. So we have pointed it up. We have stretched it out. We have, you know, ch you know fixed the verticals and we have now, you know, kind of fixed everything. But now we're going to open up this image, which was the, is the same camera, which is a 24 megapixel camera. Yeah. But we've done these images. This is the 24 pointed up with the verticals corrected. I'm going to take yeah. this image. I'm going to put it onto the tilt shift lens. This is how much this is how much resolution that we're losing by doing it in this method. Wow. So wow. again, the the um, the 24 that's shifted. I mean, I, I didn't do the color correction or anything, but you lose so much resolution. So so let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. um, how might you know that you're ready? Because if let's say you've been mulling it over, should I, shouldn't I? It's a lot of money, blah, blah, blah. What's a good indicator in your mind, Wayne, that, yeah, I think it might be time. Um, let me show you another, let me show you another example. This one's just simple. This is ultra, ultra wide angle. And you can see the distortion is, it is so wide. You can see the distortions on the side and there's too much sky. I mean, there's too much floor and too much ceiling. And I normally would crop to this because I don't need to see the distortion in the door. I don't need to see the distortion on the on the sides there, which will correct. But um, so we're going to go something like this. Yeah. So what happens is if we were doing when we were, if we were doing a zoom lens, just this thing that we can go up and down is different than if we use the zoom lens, because see that the trigger goes those those lines. Yeah. Those lines mean that I'm at a particular um, zoom rate. And if I zoomed in, I would lose top and bottom. This allows us to really pinpoint um, how much in any direction that we want. And you can't do that with a zoom lens. So we're going to do something like that. That's right. And we're going to shift over. Again, shifting over as opposed to literally turning your camera to, in another direction I'm not changing the composition by, by turning the camera. So I'm actually just picking a, the crop that I want and it'd be something like that. And that's like, this is working with a tilt shift lens. So I am, instead of using a 14 millimeter lens and cropping in all the time, um, a tilt shift lens allows you to pick your, your, your comp better. And um, you know, it's, it's just and in a way, and because of that, I think there are two advantages. First of all, it brings your uh, creativity into play in real time uh, at the shoot. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it makes you think about the actual composition you want, uh, the ratio of floor to ceiling, what mm -hmm. have you. Yeah. So I think, um, and, be and because of that, you don't have to figure that out in post. No. Right. And at the end of a day, a long day, you're tired, you're doing it, you're taking care of your composition right away on site. And I think that's, that's, that's important uh, to think, to think about. And I think it's an important consideration. Well, also um, remember though, if, you know, we did this now, if you're shooting wide angle corner to corner and you're cropping all your images, you know, for, uh, for, a, for a specific look, 
you might want to you might want to tilt shift lens because you know you already are in that frame of shooting wide and picking the area that you're going to be using. One of the misperceptions I think that's out there uh, is uh, that using a tilt shift lens would slow me down dramatically. What do you say about that? Um, it, it, at the very beginning, it can, but um, the things with tilt shift lenses, since it's a manual focus lens, um, you know, you, you, your, your camera height normally stays the same up, to, up or down a little bit. And you're already turning your camera left or right to get a comp anyways by yeah. using your lens. And it's just another way of um, fine tuning your comp. So it, it really doesn't slow you down at all. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I found. I mean, I, I know when I started out and I had this mysticism thing going in my head, that was one of my big concerns uh, as well. It, but it's like anything else. Uh, once you practice it, get used to it, it it's it's really quick. You know, let's, let's talk. I was going to talk about the price later, but since we're there, a lot of times people are going to talk about speed and price. And yeah. everybody's saying that price on a tilt shift lens is very expensive. Um, you know, especially with full frame lenses and the, the, the lenses that I'm buying now, um, I think the 12 to 24 is $1,700 for a zoom lens. A yeah, lot of the zooms that people are using are about $2,200, $1,800. Yeah. Yeah, a, yeah. a good 24 millimeter tilt shift lens you can get for $1,500. So, you know, when we're talking about price, um, yeah. tilt shift lenses are not necessarily that more, more expensive than the zoom lenses that you're buying now. Well, yeah, they, I, I think they are, you know, obviously they, they are more expensive, but the workmanship that goes in them, the quality of glass uh, it's going to be with you for the rest of your career. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you have any aspirations at all to transition uh, from real estate and start doing a bit more work for designers and architects, uh, you simply cannot do your best work in that realm without a tilt shift lens. Yes, I so agree. You might as well get one now and, and practice <laughs> and get good at it. Yeah. So Wayne, we were talking earlier that there is that there are a number of misconceptions uh, related to to using a tilt shift lens, and one of them is uh, that okay, I've got a tilt shift lens, which means all my distortion problems <laughs> uh, just goes away magically, and that is not the case. Um, if you are standing too close to your subject matter uh, and you're using a wide angle lens, uh, you're going to get distortion. Yeah. And, you know, so here's a bathroom, Wayne, that I shot a long, long time ago. And as you can see here, if you can see my cursor, there's this little, um, this wall here where the commode is in here. Mm -hmm. And, um, I had to step in several feet from the door jam. Normally, I'd be standing back and zooming in uh, to, to minimize distortion. But because I had to go several feet into the bathroom in order to get this sort of this claw foot tub, I brought a whole bunch of distortion into play. And we can see that um, from that vanity. So mm -hmm. if I take a look here, that, that drawer, we all know is the same size as that drawer, but look at the difference oh, yeah. uh, in, in the sizes there. I mean, that's what, that's what this wide angle distortion does. And just because um, you might have a tilt shift lens, well, if I'm standing in, with my camera at the exact same spot, and I take my wide angle zoom lens and I replace it with a 17 millimeter uh, tilt shift lens, I'm gonna get that exact same distortion. Yes. Yeah, right. distortion is by, you know, by distance, not by the lens, so. That's, that's correct. All right, uh, do, do you have any other uh, mystical pieces, um, uh, misconception pieces that you'd like to clear up? Well, 
not more, but I'm just going to kind of solidify everything that we've been saying about tilt shift lenses. And that is that there's no magic to them. They are simply wide angle lenses that have a very wide um, image circle that has more image than you can see in the screen. So I'm standing in the back of a wall looking through um, this atrium and I can see the ocean. So if I wanted to show more, um, more of the building, um, if I wasn't using a tilt shift lens, I would probably tilt the camera up and, you know, tilting the camera up means that I'm pointing my camera towards the floor instead of the, um, the ocean. Towards the take, ceiling. Towards yeah. The we ceiling. Just, we, we're just taking the attention away. Okay. Yeah. I know that. Yeah. I know that I, that you can turn it vertically, but again, I need the resolution. So, right. um, I'm, I want to, I want to tilt shift it. So I'm going to shift my lens up. So I see more of the, um, the living room and see more of the sky. Now I need, right. I, you need to, see, you need to see something. If you look, I'm looking straight up as I shift the lens up, you can actually see the distortion of the uh, upper part of the building um, right. as we're doing it. Again, using a tilt shift lens, even when you're shifting and everything um, cannot go past the laws of physics so correct it's not a magic wand i mean you really wand. have to be thoughtful when you use it yeah and then so what we're going to do is we're going to take these and since they're shifted up i'm going to photo merge them right and we have this there you go there you go so you know beautiful this is one of the things for a tilt shift lens um you can when you shift it when you shift them being that they're perfectly aligned when you stack them together, they make really, really good panoramics. Absolutely. So. Absolutely. So that's it. So that is our discussion on tilt shift lenses. We hope you got some, some useful nuggets from it. Um, as always, thank you for joining us. Um, Wayne, actually, if you could put at the end of the video, if you could put a link, uh, not only to our uh, contact information, but also uh, a link to the PMRE conference uh, mm -hmm. if you wanted more information about the workshop uh, that Wayne and I and Fraser Almeida are doing. Right, Wayne? Yeah, yeah. A lot of this at the workshop and, and, and in person, I th I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. Oh, it's going to be great. Anyway, thank you again for joining us. Uh, always appreciated. Uh, if you have any topics or things that you'd like uh, Wayne and I to cover, uh, please feel free to reach out to the contact info that Wayne will be uh, placing at the bottom of the screen shortly, and we'd be happy to oblige. Uh, in the meantime, thanks again. Wayne, thank you, as always. Thank you. Okay, and have a good and we'll weekend. see you soon. Bye -bye. Have a great weekend. Bye, Bye everyone.